Oh, hey guys, you're a bit early, but come on in. Welcome to my country. Come in, come in, I welcome you. I know it can be so difficult when you start your vegan journey to really, really figure out what ingredients to buy, what meals to cook. But I thought I would share with you my pantry essentials to hopefully make it a little bit more manageable, if not exciting, to create new dishes and new recipes from all your new ingredients. Ketchup, mustard, chili sauce, Tabasco, a well-stocked cupboard, wouldn't you say? So we're gonna get this started with our legumes, basically a fancy word for beans and lentils. That's actually where we can get a lot of our protein, some of our vitamins, and lots of our fiber from. In Ayurveda, it actually recommends that we use our beans and lentils from dry, soak them overnight, and then cook them. Yeah, that sounds really long, and it is, but it's definitely worth it. But if you don't have the time to do that, I would definitely recommend you use cartons instead of using tins so that we can avoid having all those chemicals seeping into our beans that we don't need. Soaking also helps us digest the beans so much better and also takes away a lot of the um, chemicals that cause flatulence or gas after eating them and causes a lot of discomfort. So we're gonna start off with our chickpeas. Great for Indian food and Middle Eastern food, especially hummus. Mm. Next we have cannellini beans, which are used in Italian food, but also really buttery, herby cannellini beans. Mm, that is so Kidney beans, which are used in Mexican food, but also Indian curries too. Pinto beans, a little refried beans, that's what these are made from, so you can use them for Mexican food too. And lastly, we have black beans, also used in lots of Mexican food, but really, really yummy to put into bowls as well. Next up, we have lentils, and there are so many possibilities with these, whether it's dal, 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 and so many others. And this time, I'm gonna stand my ground. Lentils do not take as long as beans to cook or to soak, and so I really recommend buying them dry and cooking them at home. They taste so much better. First, we have mung lentils. They come whole and split. In Ayurveda, mung dal is seen to be the queen of all lentils. It's easiest to digest, really soothing for your stomach, and has so many vitamins and minerals in it. I don't just make dal with mung, I make pancakes, falafels, and crepes too, and so many other options. Red lentils. They actually cook faster than most lentils, and they're amazing in soups, stews, but also my red lentil coconut milk dip. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we have beluga lentils. They actually have a very sweet, nutty, earthy taste, and I use them a lot in burgers. Sweet potato, beluga lentil burgers are so delicious, and they actually stay very separate, which is quite nice to use in salads. Next up, we have our nuts and seeds, and I know they're usually housed in the pantry, but actually, nuts and seeds contain a lot of unsaturated fats, which go rancid easily, and so they're actually better kept in the fridge or freezer. But if you do end up keeping them in your pantry, then just buy small amounts at a time, and don't keep them for too long. First up, we have cashews, probably the most important nut for vegans. You can make your cheeses, your sour cream, your desserts. Nothing can be done without cashews. We've got our pecans for our sweet, buttery tasting treats. We have little pistachios next, really lovely for colors on desserts. Middle Eastern and Indian desserts use them a lot too. Almonds, good for a little snack. Next, we have sunflower seeds. For anybody that's allergic to nuts but trying to be vegan, these are your go-to with similar results for cheeses, sour cream, and desserts too. Next up, we have sesame seeds, a great source of calcium, but also used across Chinese food, Indian food, and Middle Eastern food too. Next up, we have our flowers, which you can see I have quite a lot of. Spelt flour. It's actually more of a fancy version of whole wheat flour. It's actually more water soluble and so it's far easier to digest. You can actually get whole wheat or white, but I really like white for my baking and cooking too. We have sorghum flour, also known as juar, and you can find it in a lot of Indian stores. It's a really good option for gluten-free vegans. Next we have buckwheat. It's actually got much more of an earthy texture, but I really like making fluffy pancakes from it. Chickpea flour, also known as gram flour, one of my all-time favorites, often used as an Indian staple, and you can make quiches out of it you can make omelettes we have oat flour for all your baking needs cookies cookies and lots of cookies, cookies. we have almond flour next another baking treasure mm, cookies Okay. Lastly, we have our flowers made from corn. We have cornmeal, which is a lot coarser and it's often used to bread and coat things to make them super crispy. But there's also corn starch, which is used to thicken sauces. Let's get to the sweet stuff. First of all, let's talk dates. I love having dates stuffed with almond butter, sprinkled with pistachios, a few rose petals, ooh, and some dark chocolate inside too. There's also the option of date syrup or date nectar, which is really, really nice to use in sweets instead of maple syrup for a different flavor. Talking about maple syrup, we have that here too. It's great for baking and obviously on top of pancakes. And lastly, we have monk fruit. I'm not sure whether you've heard of it, but it actually comes from the fruit monk. No, 
Fruit Monk. <laughs> this one actually comes from monk fruit itself. It's the juice that's used to create these crystals. What's amazing about it is that it's almost 250 times sweeter than actual sugar and actually has no calories and doesn't affect the blood sugar in the same way. I use this a lot whether it's to sweeten my teas, my coffees, but I can also use it as a replacement in baking too. And now we're going to talk pastas. I have quite the variety, but let's start with some mung bean rotini. Like I said, mung beans are so good for you. I love having pastas made from lentils. They have more protein in them, so it's a good way to get your protein in in the day. I have spirals. I have some red lentil penne. I've got some green lentil lasagna. For my macaroni, I like these brown rice ones. And actually, brown rice pasta has a really nice texture. It stays quite al dente and doesn't go mushy. We have some pad thai rice noodles, flat and thin. We have my buckwheat soba noodles. They're 100% buckwheat and I use them on my grain-free days when I want something lighter. And lastly, I have my edamame high-protein pasta. They're noodles made just from edamame and so again, higher in protein and great for stir fries. Let's talk oils next. First off, olive oil, dressings, drizzling on top of pretty much everything. Thing. This is my favorite brand, Brightland, really good quality. It's actually great for your body all year round. We have a sesame oil for Chinese, Japanese food. It's an essential. It's also quite heating for the body, and so it's best to use during winter. We have our coconut oil, which I use on my body, on my face, in cooking, pretty much in everything. It is incredible in summer, especially. It's a cooling oil, and so it really helps pacify all the heat in your body and release it. Next, we have avocado oil, which actually has a high smoke point, and so it's really good for when you need to cook things at a high heat. Lastly, I know it's not an oil, it's a balsamic, but when there's oil, you need balsamic vinegar. Mix a bit of oil, balsamic vinegar, a bit of salt, pepper, and dip your bread in it. Let's talk flavor now. We all need condiments in our life. My family absolutely is obsessed with condiments, and our whole fridge and pantries are filled with them. Flour, olive, pickle, jams, and jelly. Nutritional yeast. This is an essential for vegans. It's normally fortified with B12, and so it's a good source of B12 for vegans. And it gives a really nice cheesy flavor to whatever you put it into. Apple cider vinegar mixed with baking soda equals really fluffy pancakes. We have rice vinegar, soya sauce, liquid aminos for our Chinese or Japanese food. It's a more mild flavor than soya sauce, and often it's also fortified with B12 too. Can't forget about our tahini for our hummus and our zesty tahini sauce and who can live without hot sauce every single Indian has about 10 hot sauces in their pantry look you're either the type of person who puts ketchup on everything or we just can't be friends for my vegan mayo my creamy dips I use vegan A's it's soy free and actually talking about vegan mayo one of my favorite sauces is vegan mayo mustard and ketchup all three mixed together with a bit of pickle juice and there you have your secret vegan in and out sauce it's a winner. Mint sauce mixed with a bit of yogurt is great drizzled on top of falafel, but also as a little side cooling dipping sauce for your Indian curries. Dal and rice go hand in hand, and just like lentils, there are so many different varieties of rice. We have... <laughs> Good old basmati rice. It is used a lot in Indian food, but it's also in Ayurveda considered to be the most easiest to digest and soothing for your stomach. Arborio rice, perfect for your risottos. Wild rice, which you can make for your salads. And black forbidden rice, which just sounds cool to have in your cupboard, but also it's rich in antioxidants and it has a very nutty flavor. We have quinoa which is actually a complete protein it has all the essential amino acids it's a nifty little grain to keep in your pantry but actually it's not grain it's a seed but we won't go there right now oats breakfast porridge overnight oats everything you need for your breakfast in the morning is in these little things we have barley also another lovely grain to have in salads a nice option instead of having rice as well on the side of a curry and lastly we have buckwheat grain again another great option instead of rice okay so let me see what i have in my baking basket. Let me bring it down here for you. <laughs> Some yeast for your naans, your breads. If you feel like experimenting with a focaccia, you're going to need some yeast. Next we have baking powder. You use this in your baking, of course. Um, for cakes especially, you need this. We have baking soda. Again, that's needed in cakes, but also in the pancakes. Like I mentioned before, baking soda, apple cider vinegar equals fluffy pancakes. Of course, chocolate chips. 
No explanation needed. Cookies. We have applesauce, which did you know it can be a replacement for eggs in so many recipes? Give it a go next time you're making muffins. Next we have agar agar, which you may not have heard of, but is definitely a staple if you want that jelly-like consistency for anything. It is a gelatin replacement and it's so good for the toppings of strawberry cheesecake. Who doesn't need some vegan sprinkles for your ice cream needs on a Saturday night when you're sitting at home watching a movie? Okay, so I feel like I've given you everything that you need. So I'm going to replenish, have a bit of a snack, used up a lot of energy in this. So uh, what are you waiting for? It's time for you to go shopping. Bye. Hey everyone, if you like this video, then please go ahead and subscribe, like and comment. And even if you didn't like it, I'd appreciate your feedback. Thanks very much.